Hello everyone and welcome to a new R tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you optical character recognition in R. Optical character recognition, according to Wikipedia, is the electronic or mechanical conversion of images of typed, handwritten, or printed text into machine encoded text. So what this pretty much means is the ability to extract text from images, whether that text is handwritten or it's just a scanned document, and being able to use that text in a meaningful way, maybe for some natural language processing or some other text analytics. Now in this tutorial in particular, we will not be looking at handwriting because when it comes to handwriting, it can be more difficult to identify that closer. So we'll just be looking at images and also PDF documents as well. So let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to load in the necessary libraries. So by default, I'm going to load in the tidyverse library. And then the library that we will be needing for the optical character recognition is a library called Tesseract. So make sure you install it if you don't have it installed. Okay, so let's go through our first exercise. So our first exercise is I want to look at a sample picture which has some sample text in English. So this is a picture. Um, unfortunately, you know, we cannot select the text if we wanted to copy paste, but the good news is that we can actually convert this um, into a text format. So the name of the file here is sample text English. So I'll be sure to reference it. So I'm just going to call it sample English equals to sample I think it was a PNG and it was sample text English. And if we were to run that, we have it in there. Now, in order to perform the optical character recognition, we only need one function from the Tesseract package, which is the OCR function. And by default, the default language engine for uh, the Tesseract is English. So if you're scanning English text, then all you really need to do is just pass in that image. So you need to pass in an image to this function in order for it to work. So if I were to run this, uh, we do get the text right here. Um, and let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup th to this just so that we can compare it to what we have. So I'm just going to replace all of the new lines with a space and then uh, I am going to just simply unlist this. So if I were to run this, we now have all of the text. And if we were to compare this side by side with what we have here, we're going to notice that it's fairly similar as well as you look through it. Now, of course, it may get some stuff off. So for example, um, this one right here, it's supposed to be 1900, but instead it actually put it as a uh, pipe key and then 900. Uh, but it did get like 1890 correct, it did get 1640 correct. Uh, so for the most part, this one actually performed really well. And the reason being is because the text is straight. Uh, it's very, and once you're working with a grayscale image, it's also easier to do to work with that and scan it. And the text is very clear. So in this case, it was really easy to convert this uh, properly. Um, and usually with OCR, it's not 100% accurate. So it may be off by a little bit. Uh, but in this case, we could see that it was mostly correct when scanning it. Okay, so that's a great example. Now, what if we want to do this, but with a PDF? So the example I have over here is a scanned PDF document that I found online. And the thing about this is that I can't select the text because this is actually a scanned form. So how can I go about extracting the text? So there's an extra step that we need to take here. And that extra step is to load in the PDF tools library. The reason we need to do this is because we need to convert that PDF into an image. Because remember, with the OCR function, it is only able to work with images. So I'm going to load that PDF file and call it scanneddocument.pdf. And then I'm going to pass it into the PDF convert. 
and then it would be PDF file. And I'm going to set the DPI, which is another parameter in here, to 600, just to ensure the best quality of the PDF. So if I were to run just that, um, it's going to give me a message saying converting page one to scanned document one.png. And then it's also converting the second page into a scanned document to PNG. And all of those will be saved to wherever your current working directory is. Now it's saved them, but we do want to extract the text from this. Um, and how do we do that? All you would need to do is you would just need to simply pipe this into a map function from the per package and just pass in OCR. And what this means is it's going to simply perform the OCR function on both pages. So if I were to run this, it's going to say that it's converting page one to scan document one. And then it's going to say the same message for page number two. And then it's going to take a couple of seconds. And then it's going to generate the text for us. And as you can see, it's been split into two items. So our first item would represent the first page. And as you can see, it extracted everything from the very top of that. So let me just reopen it. So it looks like it's it's uh, the problem here is that because we have these icons in here, so it could just extract a bunch of extra keys in there that may throw off the scanning at first. Uh, but I believe it does a pretty good job in scanning all of it. If we were to compare these side by side with the document, let's go ahead and do that. And we can see that like with new sample bottles, it's right here in new sample bottles, beginning in August 2015, beginning in August 2015. And also all the way at the end of the first page, we can see that it has the affirmative action employer services provided on a non-discriminatory non basis. And as you can see, that's the text all the way right here at the bottom, as you can see over here. So it's actually able to extract everything. It doesn't, the text size does not have to be consistent. It's actually able to extract all of that. And then it also starts extracting the second page of data pretty well as well. And then it also ends with the same thing right here. If we look at the end of the text at the Missouri State Public Health Laboratory, same thing over here at the Missouri State Public Health Laboratory. Uh, so all in all actually does a really good job at scanning PDFs as well. Okay, now you may be wondering, what if I want to scan text, but in a different language? Is that possible? And the answer is yes, that is absolutely possible. Now, I'm going to use Arabic as an example. And I do have an image here in Arabic, which is just a very simple, uh, I guess it's a song in Arabic, uh, but I wanted to keep it a very simple image. And I also wanted to show you that even with different colors, it can still extract the text. So in order to work with a different language, uh, we first need to load in the image or actually like save the image in an, in a, in an object. So I'm just going to call this Arabic song uh, .gif, which is the name of the file. Um, and then what we need to do is we actually need to use the Tesseract download function and we will need to type in the code for that language. And to find all the languages that are accessible by Tesseract, you can go to the languages supported in different versions of Tesseract. And right here, this shows you all the languages that are supported in Tesseract. And we have a wide variety of languages that you can pick from. In our case with Arabic, it's ARA -A as the code. So we just need to pass in that code. Um, I've already downloaded it, so if I were to run this again, um, it, it downloaded fairly quickly, but I already have it downloaded. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to set, uh, we need to set like a, a language engine. So I'm going to save that in the Arabic object, and I'm going to set it equals to Tesseract function, and I'm just going to pass in the Arabic in there. And now we're ready to perform the OCR on the Arabic image. And all we need to do is just type in OCR, pass in the image file object that we created, and then pass in the Arabic engine. Uh, and then if we were to run this, you're going to see that we got the text. Now let me clean this up and actually split, split the new lines. So str split the new lines. And then let me actually unlist this. 
And if we look at this, um, and let me actually just, on, on that note, it, it extracted a bunch of empty strings. I'll just remove those empty strings right like that. And you can actually see right here that it's actually matching what we have. So if we see this, so with the Arabic, you actually have to start from the right. So this is the first item right here which represents the first line. And then this represents the second line. And then this one represents the third line. This one represents the fourth line, represents the fifth line, and then represents the sixth line. And it actually collected all the letters fairly nicely. So it also does a really good job in working with other languages as well. Now, let's come to one final example of working with images that look a little difficult. So, with this example right here, I want to look at this image from a Shakespeare book. Now the goal that I want to perform here is I want to be able to extract this text on the left. Now as you can see, this isn't entirely a grayscale, um, and we can't work with this image in its entirety because it has text on the other side as well, and it's going to look a little bit messed up. I mean, let's go ahead and try and load it in just to show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna create an object called Shakespeare, and I'm gonna set it equals to the Shakespeare file, which is the shakespeare.jpg. And then I'm gonna run that. And then uh, let me just go ahead and run the OCR function on that Shakespeare object. So if I were to run that, it's going to give me a whole lot of text that is looking very gibberish, um, which is not really what we're looking for because we're essentially just looking for that left side right here, and we need this text. So what can we do here? So in this case, this is where we can use the magic package. And the magic package is an image processing package that allows you to just do image edits and some further fancy edits with like GIFs and videos. I made a tutorial on the magic package. You can actually check it out on my channel. Uh, and that's a good spot to start with uh, with the package and introducing it. So let's first of all load in the package. So I'm just going to type in library magic. And uh, what we're going to have to do over here is we need to create a magic object. So in order to perform any image processing, you need to convert your image into a magic object. And the way to do so is I will create a new object called shake magic. And I'm going to set it equals to image underscore read. And I'm going to pass in the Shakespeare object. And if you look at the class of shake magic, you're going to get a magic image object. Now, if we if you if we want to look at this image, let's just say print shake magic. And you're going to see that it's actually a pretty large image. So we're going to have to downscale it and we're going to have to crop it and we're going to have to do all sorts of things. So in order to do that, I'm just going to say shake magic and I'm going to pipe it into an image scale function, which allows you to scale the image. So I want to scale it down to uh, 1200. And then I also want to, well, actually, let's show you the result of what that looks like. So when I scale it down to 1200, it actually s makes it a little bit smaller. Um, and then I want to crop the image, and uh, the dimensions here is it starts off with width, so I'm going to put a width of 400, and I've tested these numbers out, so that's that's how I'm coming up with them, but I had to play around a little bit to see what works best. So 400 for the width, uh, 350 for the height, and then this is represented uh, to crop the image starting 200 pixels uh, from the left, and then uh, this is also representing, this fourth number represents uh, the number of pixels to start cropping from the top. So if I were to run this, what it gives me is it just crops out the section that we're trying to look at. Um, and what I want to do here is I actually want to convert this into a black and white image. So I'm going to say image convert, uh, and I want to convert this into a type equals to grayscale. And the grayscale is going to give us that black and white color. So if I run that, 
you can see that the coloring that was in there is gone and now it's a black and white image or at least closer to a gray image. Uh, I'm going to perform a little bit of contrast on it just so that I can sharpen the image. So I'm just going to set the sharpen pa parameter equals to one. Um, and then if I t were to run all of this, this would be the final product of it. Uh, but we're not done yet because if you remember with the OCR function, you can only work with images. So we need to convert this magic object back into an image. And the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to pipe it into an image underscore write function. And I'm going to use the format equals to JPEG. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass this into OCR. And then uh, let's go ahead and run this. So if we look at this, and let's actually put this all on new lines. So I'm just going to split it by the new lines. So if I were to run this, you're going to see that it actually doesn't do all that bad. So it starts by getting the first line right. And then the second one, well, it forgets that there's a space between this and figure. Um, and then with the uh, with this word over here, I mean, it has a really weird typing that I think it's more like felt, field, or, uh, or, or I don't even know what it is, honestly. Maybe this is the right spelling. Um, but as you can see, it's actually getting it right. So each line is actually, it's, it's considering each line properly. There are a couple of spelling mistakes, of course, like this is supposed to be it was, but now it's actually ter was. Um, and then... This is grower, so that, that's a U, and this is a V over here. Um, but overall, like if we were to not perform any of these, like so if I were to just, for, let me just say, let me just actually like just do the cropping, but without any of this, for example. Let me just remove these. And if I were to run this again, let me see how well of a job it does. So actually, it doesn't really do as good as the other one. So yeah, this one looks a little bit weirder. But if we were to actually add these back in, and then run all this again, whoops, let me just run that. We're going to notice that it actually does a better job at extracting the text. Now, of course, there are still mistakes, but that's just because there's only so far, so much you can do with going as far with, with um, editing the text. Um, but overall, like it's not 100% perfect, but it did a fairly good job from going from that big picture to a cropped image, sharpened up, contrasted, and trying its best to extract the text. Um, so this is some of the steps that you can take in refining your image so that you can actually extract the text better. All right, so that is the conclusion of the video. Uh, I hope you learned more about how optical character recognition works in R. Of course, feel free to explore it on your own in case you need to solve your own personal projects or any business problems that you have. So I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in the next tutorial.